Today we're going to take a look at the new Honda Recon 250. We'll talk about what Honda just changed on this ATV, where it fits in the Honda's current model lineup, what options you have in the Recon lineup, its specs and features, plus we'll start it up so you can hear what they sound like, and a lot more. But first, if you guys find any info in this video helpful, please take a second and hit the like button. Liking the video and commenting below really helps with growing this channel for YouTube's algorithm, and I really appreciate the help. Now, where does the Recon fit into Honda's current ATV lineup? It's the smallest utility ATV you can buy with its closest competitor in engine size, making us hop over to their sport models with the TRX 250X, which it shares some parts with, but there are quite a few differences too. The only thing smaller in Honda's lineup would be the TRX 90X, and Honda doesn't make a smaller utility style machine, so if you want something smaller than a Recon, that 90 is your only option. Then we hop back over to the utility side of things and you jump up to the 38 different Rancher 420 models, three different Foreman 520 models, four different Rubicon 520 models, and then last but not least, you have the Dinosaur, whoop, wait, I meant Rencon 680. If you're confused by the 29 different Rancher 420 models or the differences between the Foreman and Rubicon models, I've got videos where I break down each of those lineups that I'll link in the top right corner and below as well. I want to take a quick second and say thank you to Southern Honda Power Sports for opening their doors to me and allowing me to come pick through their inventory for these videos. They are a massive Honda Power Sports dealer here in Chattanooga, Tennessee with tons of inventory from new Hondas to used Harleys and everything in between that they sell to people from all over the USA. So check out the link in the description below and head over to their website to see if they can save you some money on your next toy. And now that we've got that out of the way, let's jump into a little more info on the Recon 250. Well first, let me explain that both of the Recon models we're walking around today are not 100% stock. The red one has larger Rancher 420 wheels and 24 inch tires on it, with everything else being stock. And then the beige one has a high lifter 1.5 inch lift kit, 12 inch frontline all terrain wheels with 24 inch EFX Moto Force tires with a winch and everything else is stock. And if you'd like more info on those items, it'll all be linked below in the description. Now let's get back on topic. And the first thing is, do you have any options with the Recon? Sadly, you don't have a 4x4 option like many of us would love to see, but I won't harp on that. Aside from colors, you do have one option. You have the option of going with Honda's manual shift transmission, also known as foot shift, but keep in mind it does not have a manual clutch that you have to use. Just click up and down with your left foot, and this is the cheaper option of the two coming in at $42.99. Its model ID is TRX 250TM, and you have three colors to choose from with red, beige, and active yellow. Then you have the Recon ES, and the ES means electric shift, but you'll also see it referred to as ESP for electric shift program as Honda likes to make things as confusing as possible sometimes. So instead of shifting with your foot, you change gears by clicking the up and down arrows on the left side of the handlebar. Some people refer to this or think of it as an automatic, but it's not. You still have to change gears at the end of the day. This model bumps your price up 250 bucks to 45.49 and your model ID changes to TRX 250TE with the same three color options, red, beige, and active yellow. And next up, so what did Honda change for 2021 on the Recon? They finally threw fuel injection at it, right? Nope. They didn't change a lot, and one of them is a bad move in my opinion, but let's jump into it. You have new plastic fenders up front and in the rear. Definitely not a drastic change, but when you compare them side by side, it's pretty noticeable and a step in the right direction. With those plastic changes also come a new front grille and headlights too. Now those changes I can get behind, but this one I can't. In the past, if you went with a manual shift model, then all you had were a couple dummy lights, as I call them, for neutral and reverse on your dash. Then when you went with the ES model, it added the gear position indicator. Now I sold Honda ATVs and only Hondas for 15 years, and more than 50% of the time, people bought the ES model over the foot shift for that sole reason. Heck, most people that bought a foot shift model wish that it had that feature from the ES model. Now, what does Honda do? They remove the gear position indicator on the ES model and replace it with a powertrain warning indicator. Don't get me wrong, that's useful in letting you know that you have a problem with the electric shift mechanism, 
and that it's time to break out the backup manual shifter. But still, I think removing the gear position indicator was a big mistake. I know not everyone needs it, and once you have the experience under your belt, it's useless, but a lot of people need this to make riding a little easier for them. Then the other change, another one that I don't really agree with, but we knew it was coming as Honda has done this to all models that have received refreshes within the last decade. And thankfully you can add it back on as an accessory, but they removed the backup recoil starter. That leaves the Rincon as the only model to still come standard with one. And now that we've got my complaining out of the way, let's jump into a little more info on the Recon. We'll start off first with the engine and drivetrain. It has a 229cc air-cooled, longitudinally mounted single-cylinder four-stroke engine. It has overhead valves and a semi-dry sump design to help make the engine as compact as possible, helping with ground clearance and to make the center of gravity as low as possible. Being mounted longitudinally with the crankshaft oriented in the direction of travel helps do away with unnecessary angles in the drivetrain, ultimately reducing friction and helping transfer that power more efficiently to the wheels. It's shaft drive so you don't have to worry about any belts and with that there's no need for lubrication or adjustments. Now let's head over to the chassis and suspension. The Recon comes with only a straight axle in the rear and it has a single shock with 4.9 inches of travel while up front you have independent double wishbone suspension that brings in 5.1 inches of travel. Your cargo racks are made out of steel and have a capacity rating of 33 pounds up front and 66 in the rear while it has a 500 pound towing capacity. The curb weight for the Recon, including its 2.4 gallon fuel tank and all fluids, comes in at 437 pounds while the ES model tips the scales at 443 pounds. Thanks to its short 44 and a half inch wheelbase, it has a tight turn-in radius of only eight and a half feet. Your ground clearance comes in at six inches with a 31.2 inch seat height. And both Recon models come with the same 22 by seven tires up front with an 11 inch wheel. And in the back you have 22 by 10 tires on a nine inch wheel. They also share the same brakes with a dual 130 millimeter hydraulic drum brake setup up front and a single 140 millimeter mechanical drum in the rear. Next up, let's touch on some accessories. Now Honda doesn't offer much when it comes to OEM accessories, but you do have a couple things and for everything else you'll have to go aftermarket. You have an outdoor cover and bags for the front and rear racks. The bags do come in handy as you don't have anywhere on the machine for storage, except for the little spot right here in the back. Plus you also have a trailer hitch kit with an oil temp light for those that really plan on pushing it hard. Now let's start it up and show you guys what it sounds like and then we'll come back for a few more things. And that's the Honda Recon 250, Honda's most affordable utility ATV and one of their best sellers too. Is it perfect? No. Could it stand to see some upgrades in a few different areas? 100%. But then we'll start to see that $1,300 price difference shrink between it and the Rancher 420. And at that point, who wouldn't just want to hop up to the Rancher? On the flip side though, you have a lot of people that will pay good money for a recon with some of the rancher's features just because they want that smaller package of the recon 
and don't like how big ATVs have gotten over the years. But what do you guys think about the new recon changes? And what do you think about the Honda Recon in general? And what would you like to see Honda change next on it? Also, how many of you would like to see a 4x4 version? And what do you think is a justifiable price point for something like that? That's enough rambling for me on this video though. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below and I'll be joining in on the conversation too. But that's a wrap for this one guys. Thanks again for all the support lately. I really appreciate it and we'll see you in the next one.